from narrow provinces of fish and bread and tea, home of the long tides, where the bay leaves the sea twice a day and takes the herring's long rides, where if the river enters or retreats in a wall of brown foam, depends on if it meets the bay coming in, the bay not at home. Where, silted red, sometimes the sun sets facing a red sea, and others veins the flats lavender, rich mud in burning rivulets. On red gravelly roads, down rows of sugar maples, past clapboard farmhouses and neat clapboard churches, bleached, ridged as clamshells, past twin silver birches, through late afternoon, a bus journeys west, the windshield flushing pink, pink glancing off of metal, brushing the dented flank of blue beat-up enamel. Down hollows, up rises, and waits patient while a lone traveller gives kisses and embraces to seven relatives and a collie supervises. Goodbye to the elms, to the farm, to the dog. The bus starts. The light grows richer, the fog shifting, salty, thin comes closing in. Its cold round crystals form and slide and settle in the white hen's feathers, in grey glazed cabbages, on the cabbage roses and lupins like apostles. The sweet peas cling to their wet white string on the white washed fences. Bumblebees creep inside the foxgloves, and evening commences. One stop at Bass River, then the economies, lower, middle, upper, five islands, five houses, where a woman shakes a tablecloth out after supper. A pale flickering, gone. The Tantramar marshes and the smell of salt hay. An iron bridge trembles and a loose plank rattles but doesn't give way. On the left, a red light swims through the dark. A ship's port lantern. Two rubber boots show, illuminated, solemn. A dog gives one bark. A woman climbs in with two market bags. Brisk, freckled, elderly. A grand night. Yes, sir, all the way to Boston. She regards us amicably. Moonlight as we enter the New Brunswick woods. Hairy, scratchy, splintery. Moonlight and mist caught in them like lamb's wool on bushes in a pasture. The passengers lie back. Snores. Some long sighs. A dreamy divagation begins in the night, a gentle, auditory, slow hallucination. In the creakings and noises, an old conversation, not concerning us, but recognisable somewhere back in the bus. Grandparents' voices, uninterruptedly talking in eternity. Names being mentioned, things cleared up finally. What he said, what she said, who got pensioned, deaths, deaths and sicknesses, the year he remarried, the year something happened. She died in childbirth. That was the son lost when the schooner foundered. He took to drink, yes, she went to the bad. When Amos began to pray, even in the store, and finally the family had to put him away. Yes. That peculiar affirmative. Yes. A sharp, indrawn breath, half groan, half acceptance, that means life's like that. We know it. Also death. Talking the way they talked in the old feather bed, peacefully, on and on, dim lamplight in the hall, down in the kitchen, the dog tucked in her shawl. Now, 
It's all right now, even to fall asleep, just as on all those nights. Suddenly, the bus driver stops with a jolt, turns off his lights. A moose has come out of the impenetrable wood and stands there, looms rather, in the middle of the road. It approaches. It sniffs at the bus's hot hood. A moose has come out of the impenetrable wood and stands there, looms rather, in the middle of the road. It approaches. It sniffs at the bus's hot hood, towering, antlerless, high as a church, homely as a house, or safe as houses. A man's voice assures us, perfectly harmless. Some of the passengers exclaim in whispers, childishly, softly, sure are big creatures. It's awful plain. Look, it's a she. Taking her time, she looks the bus over, grand, otherworldly. Why? Why do we feel, we all feel, this sweet sensation of joy? Curious creatures, says our quiet driver, rolling his R's. Look at that, would you? Then he shifts gears. For a moment longer, by craning backward, the moose can be seen on the moonlit macadam. Then there's a dim smell of moose, an acrid smell of gasoline.